Okay. And I think Classy. Classy. <laughs> I think we're live. Everyone watching at home, thank you so much for tuning in. And Nick and Eliza, thank you so much for joining me today. Of course. Happy Absolutely. To be here. Thrilled about it. We are going to have mm -hmm. so much fun, as I like to call them show nanigans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that feels appropriate. Lovely. Gotta gotta stay on brand. So Yeah, absolutely. So let's just start off like casual. How have the two of you been? Nick, I know you did a live uh, Instagram earlier today. That's like a mm -hmm. one o'clock every week type of thing. Every Friday at one. Every Friday at one PM. We uh, we get on the live and we have some shenanigans. It was funny too because I forgot. So I did the uh, back in 2017. I did the ABC showcase, and I forgot that we actually had our showcase at our showcase. Like was having like a little party, a Zoom party at one as well. Um, <laughs> so like I was like, oops. So I literally I had to I had to I did the, the live is usually like an hour. I did it like for 30 minutes today because I was yeah. like, let me get over there and like say hi. Um, it was awesome. It was awesome to see all their faces. But the live, yeah, live is always fun. I'm waiting for a live to come and do it you know but she doesn't eliza doesn't like talking to me you know i she hate it like, yeah she hates it. she doesn't like interacting with me so you know, it's gonna take a second that's why i send nick um an emoji videos because i don't yeah. want him to see my face um you know but what? it's important for him that we're in regular contact because this, this actually brings up a really good point that i want to i think we should get out early you know so uh, you ask us how we are I don't know how Eliza is because she only sends me her emotions via the, these digital masks of these animojis. And what I will say is that uh, her animoji of herself is is uh, disturbingly accurate. I don't I don't like I don't like how close to life she was able to get within the parameters of the app. It's very, it's like, it's like her face. It's very strange. I don't like that. I don't like that she has that much time. The other animoji that she sent me was a giraffe. I did and send him a giraffe, a singing giraffe, giraffe, no less. Yeah, that giraffe is really not cool. And I, I really want her to rethink that. So <laughs> Eliza, rethink that. You know what I mean? Well, I just want to make sure that you're not alone in this time of social distancing <laughs> and <laughs> that you know you have the animal kingdom by your side as well as me in digital form not actually me because i hate you but um yeah, 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 yeah. you know memes yeah. and gifts and various and bitmojis and traps traps exactly what we call them traps <laughs> so yeah man how that's are a, you yeah that's the more important question hey, how are you doing me oh i feel like mm -hmm. i'm just a fly on the wall in this conversation right now mm -mm. <laughs> don't be no you gotta you Never. gotta step in because yeah. this will this will go this will go so sour <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm great i'm over here in washington state here with my boy <laughs> nice and our dog nice. and just like chilling very fortunate to have outside space like we were kick, kicking the footy around before in the backyard so love that Classy. Love that. So all, all good. And I want to show you. So we we started the Marvel Marathon, Nick, as we mentioned. And nice. I I got us um these like Avengers uh whiskey glasses. Classy move. You went all in. You went all in, I and I respect it. that. Um, well done. But I'm actually a Wonder Woman girl, so this is this is mine. That's beautiful as well. I am here for yeah. that as well. Yeah, we approve. Where, did you just oh. get those like on Amazon? On Etsy. On Etsy. Oh, and nice. There are a lot of local vendors. Yep. Right. I'm, I'm all about the local. And there were so many options, and these were like the classiest. So that's what I went for. Because mm -hmm. you're classy. Mm -hmm. You are classy. And this the Avengers are classy. So you got to match it. All classy, there you go. all the way around. Um, and yeah. yeah. Uh, everyone here, uh, they're saying, hey, and Peep Powers. There are a lot of Hamilcast Patreon. Oh, hi, Peeps. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Hey, the Peeps. The Peeps love Nikki Walk. <laughs> no, no, the Peeps, the Peeps are too kind. The Peeps are they, responsible for your, for your cereal love. Not your cereal true. love, but for your, your continuation they, no. of being fed via cereal. True. That's very true. That's the Peeps true have, love. In fact, You'll never get is. cereal from me. I don't want cereal from you. 
<laughs> you understand me? <laughs> That's the last thing I want is cereal. You, you want cereal from anyone that'll give you cereal. Inaccurate because some people <laughs> don't trust. I trust the peeps. I don't trust you. You understand I mean, that? That's fair. That's yeah, that's, it is fair. <laughs> that's terrifying. a good source of judgment on your part. Uh, it's oh, rare God. for you, but I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks mm-hmm. so much. I feel like this is a great transition. So when I had Fergie on, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna quote directly, but it's gonna be oh, pretty God. close. He, he yeah. called you a garbage person, and I just me. Want- yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. He would never call yeah. me that. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, he wouldn't call you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's I'd, so true. I'd love to have you respond to that. <sighs> okay, so this let's let's talk about Fergina for a second, and that is his name, Fergina, um, and that's a wonderful name, and I love always loved it. Uh, you know, I think that. I think that our industry, our sector of the entertainment industry breaks down into like two groups. There's people who came into this industry and like fought hard to be here and like want to be here and like love what they do and like, you know, and, and, and like love theater and Broadway and like all that stuff. And that's very much Fergie. That's who Fergie is. Right. And then there's people like me that like, should not be in here at all. And how they were led into this industry is a mystery to me. And who like everything they touch just burns to embers. You know what I mean? So I feel like, and, and and you can, and then within that group, there's two subsections. You can either lean into that or you cannot. I lean into it, you know? And I think that what you're really experiencing with Fergina is, is just, uh, he knows that like, I am, I am like chaos. You know what I mean? And like, I'm there to kind of destroy everything that he holds dear. And so if he wants to call that a garbage person, I would call that progress, right? I would call that the next step in evolution. And, that's just what it is. And I, I don't know how to make it any clearer than that. You know, so Fergie, if you're listening out there, sweetie, I love you. I'm so sorry that you are of the past, but I am the future. And, you know, that's just what it, and it's, and it's weird because I'm older than him. So I shouldn't be the future, but, and yet, and yet here we are. Bangarang. The shirt says it all, you know? So that's you know what, what I got to say. I just had you. a vision of. What? You know him? In- <laughs> You're gonna hate this, and I'm gonna. I already lie. hate it. I already hate it. You know, it. in Hercules, those two little gremlins <laughs> that yeah, are um, yeah. <laughs> like friends yeah, yeah, of yeah. Hades. Yeah, I feel yeah. like that actually really perfectly captures Nick because he like wants to raise hell and yeah, yeah, yeah. he wants yeah. to like be part of mischief, but he's also gonna like massively mess it up. Like yeah. he's gonna do it incorrectly, and then yeah. there's something also like weirdly endearing about like their incompetency (laughs) (laughs) and that's nick walker just incompetent incompetent how was he let that was something that fergie would ask me several times like fergie like at the end of so many of our performances of hamilton would just come up to me and be like how how did you get here (laughs) like how with all that you do how do you have a job how did you arrive? How do you still maintain? And I would never have an answer for him. You know, Eliza, Eliza, you know, she, she worked as our, as our dance captain for how long were you dance captain? How long were you DC for on Hamilton? Year and a half. Or yeah. maybe a little yeah, bit yeah, less. Yeah. And, you know, so much of the experience, you know, working with Eliza, Eliza, you know, is, um, She's, I mean, and I will, I'm not going to compliment her often, but but what I will say is she's incredible on stage and she, you know, why she's so great at what she does is not only her knowledge of what's going on with her, whoever, whatever role she's in at the time, but like just, I would say of like dramaturgy as a whole, I would say of like just a vast understanding of, of how a machine of a show works, which is why, you know, we made her dance captain. But I feel like our relationship when she was on stage and I was on stage was probably Not very safe. frustrating for her because I, as man six, especially in the ensemble of Hamilton Broadway had little to no regard for like what, what should be happening. 
Do you know what I mean? And it was only like, what can I make happen? Particularly when Eliza's on stage. Do you know what I mean? What can I make? Let's make What's, things. What is unfortunate for me is that <laughs> although I have was in a position of leadership, I also do love to play on stage. Hey. <laughs> and so it's and for me, I'm always like, okay, what can I give people permission to do? Like, what are moments hey. that I'm like, I know that brings that person so much joy. That is 100% incorrect, but it yeah. makes them happy. So like, what are the moments we can allow them? Like, this was the constant battle with the Neil Haskells of the world. It's like, oh God, no, Neil Haskell. You Neil, you can't do that. That one's not allowed. It's one step too far. You um, actually can't do that. Nick Walker is another great example of that. Of like, nope, we got to rein in again. Someone, <laughs> someone's going crazy. <laughs> What's, but then at the same time, if I was on specifically as woman five with him, it was like, why are you bringing over. out the worst in me? Game over. <laughs> why have you, you was, lost all credibility? So, if you don't know in the ensemble of, I'm sure everybody listening knows, but the ensemble of uh, Hamilton, man six and woman five are like pair. Like they, they just spend the show together. So whoever my woman five was, you know, my, my woman five, like that I started with was Elizabeth Judd. And that was like my ride or die. And she, to the point where like, when I had my last show as man sick, she had already moved on to standby. It was one of the best things ever happened to me in theater. Um, she this was surprised, a brilliant surprise. This was a brilliant surprise. She'd been standby for like a month at that point. So she hadn't been on stage with me. She came back as woman five for her, for, for my last show. And like, I didn't know until I stepped on stage and I saw, I was like, and it was, it was one of the sweetest things that ever happened. Um, but when Eliza was on as woman five, it was like, it was like, it was a mistake. It was just, it just should not have been like, you just can't, you can't do that. You can't have her and me <laughs> in tracks like that. And can't unfortunately, when I first started out, Donald Weber yeah, had yeah. also recently joined the company uh, as a man five. Really were screwed. And yeah, so were the, screwed. the three of those, those people just really have a lot of time together. And so, Nick and Donald having the history that they do also quite yeah. enjoyed like ganging up on me. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no. yeah, yeah. We would so, like we would certain make entrances. They would be like, or we'd be on stage, but their shoulders would be covered behind my back, and so they'd yeah, be yeah. taking their in stage arm and like poking me or like trying yeah. to like unzip my corset or like yeah, yeah, yeah. take my gloves out of my hand. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, monsters. I, un I unzip boots. That was my big thing. I love thing. unzipping boots. I love unzipping boots because they, because like there's so many moments where people are like frozen and stuff yeah. and like doing like cool moves and shit, but they can't move their feet. And so I'd just be like, zip. And just, you are and they, the most unprofessional to... person I know. <laughs> can I tell you though? Can I tell you though? <laughs> the change that's happened in the past three years, like if you were to be backstage with me, I mean, Ain't Too Proud is a completely different beats because like, I don't You're have You're not any backstage, time. which is actually I'm quite helpful. Backstage. Less time to plot. That's less time and to you're plot. probably I, more mentally exhausted so also less time to plot on stage because you literally I, carry the production i literally can't do anything because the show won't happen in a way so actually like, it's like probably better in the long it's run much it's like better. this is the only way to control you like give you no opportunities to think. so no, many lines no that you freedom. have to be professional you have to be, I have to be professional. And, and I, but, but I do appreciate, and I said that, I said that in the letter that I wrote to, to Lynn and Tommy and like, and Pat, like, because there is, you know, I think that one of the things that I miss about, about ensemble is like, because of the amount of work you're doing, but also the, the amount, like the, the kind of up and down of your track generally when you're ensemble, like, you know, because, because there's no, because there's not generally a narrative focus with you, you do have time and you do have, there's a certain sense of community that I miss. And there's a certain sense of like play that, that I miss just because like, that's the ensemble is like, they're the hardest working people in the building, but they also just, they have to rely on each other. And in that reliance and trust comes a playfulness and a fun generally when you have a good ensemble. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, I will say like, like back to the letter that I wrote, I was like, Hamilton taught me how to properly lead a show. I did not know before Hamilton. And I will say that like, that was like, I, I, I'm very grateful for the three years that I had to learn how to do this and not be a complete jackass. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I, I, I think that it was all like a great 
learning ground for me. Um, you know, and it's not that hard to not pull pranks. Like, just don't do it. You know, <laughs> just, just, just don't. <laughs> just be just don't a grown up. Just be a grown up. But like, and yeah, that's time, kind of a big deal for you. That's a very big deal for me. That's a very, it's huge for me. But like, I also don't, I don't ever want to lose that sense of play. Like that, that's the thing, you know, there's so few shows and, and I would say this about Eliza as well. I think, I think the thing that makes, you know, why, why I kind of force Eliza to be one of my good, good friends is like, I feel like for both of us, there's shows that we truly, I don't think would, would survive in. Not because we couldn't do them, but just because of, I think, I think one of the things that I, I love about Eliza is, is what fulfills her and what doesn't fulfill her are two very distinct things. And she's, and, and just from being your friend, you are in a great way, very aware of them. And, and I think that you have always looked for the thing that's like, okay, even if, even like, like legitimately you as, as DC of Hamilton, you were good. You were set. You were great. You can, we can sit there and you can make that money. And then you were like, you know what, but I want to do something new. So then you go to King Kong and then like you keep challenging yourself. I mean, like that, that takes a certain type of person. You know what I mean? And I think that, I think that that's one of the things that I just don't ever want to lose is just that sense of like, I, I'm here. I am here to play. You know what I mean? Yes. I'm here for money and I'm very fortunate to have these jobs, but like I play pretend, you know what I mean? And I get to, I get to act like, like a badass in these crazy situations. Um, that is fun to me. And I don't, I don't ever want to, I always try to find that balance of like, yeah, I got to be serious, but I also, playing is how i get my best workout you know what i mean so like so it's a balancing act it's certainly a balancing act well not that i would ever compliment nick walker but i do know this guy named nick who nice, loves nice, to nice, play nice. um nice. but also the play comes from appreciation and respect of the art and so wanting to play because wanting to keep the art alive and wanting to stay committed and so what i think we both learned being in ensemble uh, especially in a show like hamilton is that it's ground to play because there's a lot of ownership in that material. Um, but it's also, you can play with slightly lower stakes because although you carry the show, you're not the guiding point um, mm -hmm. throughout the entire production. And so that kind of teaches you in a safe way how to play and in what case. And that's also like what art is. Like you're always needing to make choices. You're always needing to bring yourself to the material. And so although Nick loves to play that he's, you know, a big bear he's really just like a little teddy bear and he just is like it. the mo the biggest love bug you'll ever meet but also it. like a monster but like a cute person. one like a cute like the monster little, like the little gremlins from hercules Re i mean actually if we're being honest you're really more of a fail of hercules don't could you not ever say that because <laughs> we've had this <laughs> that's what i'm trying to say that's what i was trying to say i know don't if James ever sees this, I'm never going to live it down. And it will be all your fault, Eliza. Well, it wouldn't be I the first time that. that something is all my fault, so. <laughs> woof. Woof. Ugh, woof. It's, it's almost like there's video evidence that I can just clip that one little part. <laughs> you know, almost. <laughs> like, just maybe out there somewhere is video evidence of, of, of insanity. Yeah, man. But but we're gonna go go ahead. Sorry, I cut you off. Oh no, I was just gonna say it was also like when you're like, oh yeah, this is how I do my bows, and I'm like, oh wait, but I I'll, I have that. See for yourself. Legit though, <laughs> legit though, I do do. That is the closest bow is that serious actor bow. That's the closest because I don't because that's the thing. So so that's actually a really funny story. So when I was so the longest rehearsal process I had for Ain't Too Proud was that bow. They had to do that bow with me. Maybe like it was a, it took a whole rehearsal for a bow because the thing was like, I don't like, I don't like bows. I'm not like, I don't, I'm like, this is not what, this is not the point. Like, let's get this done. So like they had to be like, Nick, please slow down. Nick, please slow down. Nick, please slow. And I had to keep sending me back. And like, until I got the timing, right. Cause like, I'm just like, thank you. And we move on. I don't want to do this. You know, this whole, <laughs> Like, like, I just, I just want to, I want to bow and go home. You know what I mean? Because, like, that's, an, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I don't know, I can't remember if it was that night or, like, a few days later, but we were hanging out when you were still rehearsing at the yep. studio, and we had a full, like, exegesis about bows, yes. <laughs> like, yes. breaking down, yes. like, 
why vows are valuable and what they can be. And then, you know, also did <laughs> the impersonations of the various types of vows that exist. <laughs> but then also we're like figuring out how can you vow, Nick, and not feel like a fraud, but also like be respectful of everyone mm. who's giving so you true. their energy, just like you gave them yours. It's so true. It's so true. The amount of the amount of exegesis that me and Eliza have had could maybe like it's almost too many. <laughs> like, like we 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 talk. I, I Eliza's like one of my go to calls for like anything anything having to do with my writing. Anything like that's just like like I, I like we we've just talked we we've broken down a lot of a lot of crazy shit about this industry, you know, and we'll continue to as we are doing now, you know. Look at that, just like this. Look just like this. This is just happening. Like this. Yeah. You know. And so, okay, yeah, yeah. we've spoken a little bit about "Ain't Too Proud," but I also want to talk about Six and the choreography because that show. Yeah. It's just, it's so much fun. We saw it in London, and then I saw it. Actually, Six was the last show I saw before Broadway shut down. Oh, my gosh, amazing. I'm glad you got a chance to see it. Me, too. And, I mean, you were about to have opening night. Like That is true. What, what was, like, that emotion like? Just to change up this energy a little bit. Um. Yeah, you know, that was a bummer for sure. For sure. I would say, and also, you know, it's just like the nature of a 24 hour news cycle is that you almost always find things out from the internet before you find out about them from the person that you would expect to hear about. And that's like just the nature of the business. I feel like that was true for pretty much everyone, but it was particularly strange for us because the timing was like the shutdown is taking place. No gatherings of 500 people or more starting at 5 PM. And we thought, our performance is at 6.30. But like, surely we're not going to just not do it. Are we not doing it? So we're te- the associates and I are texting back and forth. And then like 30 minutes later, we got an email that basically three sentences. That was like, the governor's made this decision. We will not have the performance tonight. Thank you. And we were <sighs> like, wait, that's it? But then, you know, another 30 minutes went by and we got like an in-depth, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. And we still were able to like do a very small gathering with cast and crew. And, you know, a lot of people had flown in from London creatives that hadn't been there for the whole previews process. And so we still got to have a little moment just to cheers and connect and say, see you when we see you, I guess. (laughs) Um, Mm. No. So I would say all in all better this way than the other way, which would, would be one opening and then, not having a chance to build off that momentum because the world imploded and also opening when it's not safe and feeling like we're not making a wise decision for like the sake of our company, for the sake of the public, et cetera. Um, So now we are in a holding pattern like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Uh, The show itself is such a trip and really fun. And those performers are working their butts off. Um, for 75 minutes, which let me tell you, I, I keep going down in length of show. Hamilton's, you know, a solid two hour, 55 minute production, including intermission. Kong was like two hours and 20 minutes, which included a 20 minute inter- intermission, which was a game changer. So I would be, I was like home from King Kong before they were out of the show at Hamilton, which was amazing and life changing. Um, but now 75 minutes, I mean, I really, I have screwed myself. I can't go back. I didn't know what life could be like. And now I know, and it's just going to be, it's going to be a loss. Gross. (laughs) Gross. Yeah. Wow. Um, But the show is extraordinary. What I love about, so I think good art happens when people who know themselves and are willing to be like vulnerable and honest with themselves as a human being, create art that reflects that. And so what is spectacular about that show is that Toby and Lucy who created it are just the kindest humans I've ever encountered and so unabashed about what they want to create. And I think when material is unapologetic, whether or not it's comedy, entertaining, dramatic, whatever, but when it's unapologetic about what it's trying to do is when it's successful because that material knows what it is, you know, and Toby and Lucy have created that. And so they've just created the show that reflects the type of humans they are, which are people that are 
full of light that want to empower others that have a bit of a snarky take on, you know, some terrible things that went down in history, but also saying, well, what can we do with it? How are we going to take this and how are we going to move forward? Um, and also they love pop music. Like Toby for his 21st birthday was given a, be- a full size Beyonce cutout. <laughs> Like they love pop music. And so they created catchy bops. Like that music is undeniably catchy. And so it's just fun. And I love mm-hmm. the her story. That is such a nice touch. Oh, they're very clever. I mean, they're, it's full of little like clever puns throughout. But her story is a real winner. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. So what, I mean, I agree that if they had done it You couldn't have, but like the headlines would have been so different. Whereas now it'll be like, you know, these positive, like opening night and, and all this fun. What do you think like the first show back is going to be like for six and eight too proud? Oh, I mean, I, well, all of us are going to have to do, you know, like a few weeks of rehearsals, because let me tell you, if you go on like one week vacation, you come back, you're like, I forgot the show. (laughs) So like, this is going to be a situation. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but once we're done with rehearsals and we stop being scared out of our minds and then people come into the space and everyone's scared out of their minds again, I think it's just going to be electric because I think mm-hmm. we are people that are made to connect and we're people that are made to relate and express ourselves. And we've felt so cooped up for so long. Like even this is kind of silly, but I've been taking um, Andy Blakey Bueller has been teaching class like three times a week. And so we've been doing all these combos and he's been really intentionally trying to be wary of space constraints and so we've been doing a lot of like tension uh material like things that are a little bit more contained um but today we just did like a really big dance number that was full of release and it was actually one of the most energizing things i think any of us have done in the last five weeks because we felt like we were pushing past the boundaries um that our present circumstances are kind of putting on us and so i feel like that first show will be that same sort of sensation, but exponentially greater. Um, Cause I feel like there's just such a desire to like be around people again and to get to do things where we can bring to life what we love and share ourselves with people in that way. So I, I think it's just going to be such a blast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nicholas. Oh, me, it's my turn. Um, no, I, 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 I completely agree. I think, I think that, I think it's going to be beautiful once we get back because I think, I think exactly like Eliza said, you know, we are, we, this is what we do and this is who we are and, 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 you know, being, being cooped up. And it's also, you know, I think that, I think that when we come back, because, you know, looking at it, you know, none of us can predict this thing. None of us know what's happening. None of us know the details. Um, you know, and I, and I think there is a comfort in that, but it's also just the truth. We don't know what's happening. We don't know what the date is. We don't know. But whenever the date is, it's going to have to be a date that audiences feel safe coming back. And, but I think that what's wonderful about that is the amount of trust that's going to have to be in our buildings to make these shows happen is going to be massive. And, and, you know, there will be guidelines and there will be a new thing to keep us safe. But I just think that, I think you're going to, I'm hoping that you're going to see a lot of people who just have been waiting to be back on stage and in the, in the seats. Um, I'm hoping that it's almost like, it's almost like when you're training for um, like, you know, when training for a marathon, when you're like, when you're uh, practicing basketball, whatever, you know, you wear like ankle weights and you, and you like really, you know, you try to add the extra weight so that when you're, when you're actually doing the thing, it's like a whole release. And I'm just hoping it's going to be like that where, you know, we've been, we've been kind of holding ourselves back for this moment. And then as soon as the moment hits, you know, we, it's going to be something real special. Um, and I know it's, I know for the Ain't Too Proud cast specifically, that's, you know, cause it's all, it's all, you know, the amount of, amount of talent in that building is ridiculous. And I, I, I just feel like our, our first night back is going to be a, a wild, wild party. Um, you know, so yeah, man, but it's the, I was literally just having this conversation with, with, uh, with my wife, you know, I think so much of, of what we have to reconcile with right now is just the fact that like allowing it to be uncertain and allowing it to be scary. Do you know what I mean? Like, cause it is, this is unprecedented. This is, this is something we never in our lives thought 
what happens. And on top of that, you know, I think about like my, you know, so many of the, like, it's, it's specifically our sector of the entertainment industry, you know, film, t- film TV will probably be back, you know, not, not anytime soon, but like sooner than we will, you know, it's, it, we're going to be, we are truly probably the last bastion, the last sector because of who, because of what we do, because what we do. And it's not just, it's not just us, right? It's, you know, it's West End, it's New Orleans, it's any place where you're, where you're, your ec- economy thrives off of crowd interaction. Um, but that, and I, so, you know, I think that for a long time, I've tried to be like, no, let's just, you know, be positive and whatever. It's like, no, you have to deal with the fact that that's like a little scary, but I, I truly do believe that we are coming back. I, I don't think, I think, I think this is, it's too vital, you know, it's too vital. And that's why I think the celebration will be so big. Cause it's, it's something that we need. We need to get in a dark room and hear some art. That's just part of the human condition. Well, art has existed for centuries. Like since humans have been alive, we have documentation and record of that people look for ways to express themselves, which is why you have drawing cave drawings, which is why before people could document stories, they were telling them orally. Like art has survived many other instances throughout history of world plagues and like Mm -hmm. natural disasters. And yet still because human beings are naturally resilient and adaptable and because artists are inherently creative and find creative solutions and people have a desire to express themselves in one way or the other and connect and find words to express themselves that artists can provide. I just can't foresee a future where it doesn't exist. It might Mm -hmm. look different, but I think that's what's spectacular about we are most equipped to handle something different because we are an industry that thrives off of creativity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. there's something about people who do something eight times a week, the same thing in front of an audience or who write for that or direct for that. Like it is such a unique skill and that's already so difficult in and of itself that you are the most resilient type of people. And I know, Broadway will be back. This is just intermission as a lot of the companies have been have been posting, but it has been it has been hard uh, to think about like when the next time is that we're going to see something. And we are so fortunate that like things like this where we can interact over Zoom or like the the 25 years of Disney, which is coming up after this. You know, Mm -hmm. like it's so exciting that we do have like some things are filmed, right? Like we we can watch Newsies, we watch Legally Blonde, you know, but it's obviously not the same. Have you watched any of those like Broadway type things or what have you been watching? Um, Eliza. My husband and I started watching John Wick, (laughs) the John Wick trilogy. Um, This is also, you know, very rarely do I thank Nick Walker, but I was, we were trying to find it on a streaming site and it wasn't there anymore. And he said, well, actually I've just rented them and here's my login. So we watched John Wick in one and John Wick two. And then I said, I do need at least a one night break before watching John Wick three, because although Keanu Reeves is the gifted in the martial arts and super fun to watch in these movies and the action sequences are great, the line deliveries um, are tough for me. So I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back at you. Come back, I'm gonna come at, back me. at this, and then I'll come so right here, back. <laughs> no, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. So my my wife um, is like the biggest, the biggest supporter of Keanu Reeves. The biggest. She loves Keanu Reeves. She loves him, Sarah. and she she showed me this movie, Destination Wedding, because my because that was my thing. I was like, I watched the first John Wick, and I was like, you know, the reason this works for this guy is because legit, like it's a perfect character for him because he's not saying much. Like he's just, he's just there and he's like, and he's a man with a mission and like, he's a badass and like, that's it. And Sarah was like, do you not think Keanu Reeves can handle text? And I was like, I just think not this, this plays to his strengths. She showed me this movie called Destination Wedding, which is basically, it's like, it came out maybe three, three or four years ago. It's him and Winona Ryder, and it's literally like a two-hander play with these. Like, it's just them at a destination wedding, like supporting uh, his his brother, her ex, as he gets married. And 
it's just them talking for two hours and like heavy, like stylized, almost like sitcom esque, like almost like imagine like Frasier esque dialogue. And he actually beasts it. Like it's actually re- like he's good. And, and I mean, and he also, I mean, he, he came up in Shakespeare. So this is not a guy who doesn't know how I think, I think that he just, he definitely has a certain delivery that people identify as like weird, but like he, he does, <laughs> I got to say, like, he does know how to speak. Like, it's not like he's just a man who does not understand words. Uh, Listen, you know what I mean? So what? I'll come back at that. Okay. So I think that I'm generally, like, a pretty strong dancer. I have, like, good training, and I can handle a lot of different things. However, I can go to some classes and learn the choreography and think, have I ever danced before? What's, nice, nice. what's happening right now? Nice. How did, when did I get so bad? <laughs> nice, and then nice, go to nice, a different nice. class and be like, oh, okay, there it is. It's bad. Mm-hmm. So I don't discount that he is capable of handling text. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. I will say mm-hmm. is that the text in John Wick, which is not great. Like it's not life-changing writing. It's amazing it's for what it is. Like for what it is. Again, it, it is unapologetically what it is. It's so it's great, it but like yeah. some people in those movies handle the text really well. Like they found their, their way to do it. Like the guy yeah. who play, who's in the wire, who plays yeah. the yeah, Lance, uh, uh, Lance Reddick. Yep. Yes. Lance Reddick. He is great. extraordinary. Yeah. And even, um, so there's lots of, there are moments and certain characters that I'm like, oh, you have found your character in this and you, you know, know what, you're, what doing. you're doing and why you're doing it. And yeah. I feel like Mr. Reeves is just saying the lines. Or, or I feel like he's an, I don't share his interpretation of the character, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. I, and I, I, won't, I won't argue with that. I won't but man, are that. they entertaining. We are like living for these, yeah. se- these action sequences. And he loves a headshot, which is like so gnarly. Loves, and gnarly loves a headshot. You need <laughs> to see. So that's impressive. why... You, you do need to watch chapter three because the things oh, we'll that have, have, we'll probably watch it tonight. Yeah. It's pretty, it, it will get you, you're going to be like, Oh God, like, Oh God. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause especially where, where chapter two left off chapter three, you're it's, you're not even ready, dude. You're not, you're, you're actually not ready. I you're also not. really love the sub story of the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like the you know. pit bull that he snagged at the end yeah. of the first movie, and then it's just yeah. his little friend in the second movie. I'm thrilled yeah. about it. You sh- as you should be. There's a lot yeah. of dogs. There's a lot of dogs that we're going to meet. Eliza, let me ask you a question. Uh, you know, based off of this question, do you watch a lot of musicals outside of your job? Like, um, do you? Wa- and this is this no. is like a gen because I know because and that's what I'm saying because I know people I know people in our industry who do. And I know people in our industry who don't. I don't. You don't. But like Aaron Albano does. Does does every day. Fergie you know does. I mean? And like Fergie does. Um Yeah. It's just it's something it's something very interesting because I think for my for my it, I think it dep- like for me, my my thing is like that's my work. So I'm like, I'm good. Like when I when I get home, like I don't need to see it. I don't need to, you know, and it's not like a disrespect at all. It's just like, I I go to work and I do it and I come home and, you know, it's not, It's but I think it's different for different people. Well, and I also think you and I are very similar in that, like, we didn't come from this world. So, like, That's I didn't true. grow up doing musicals. I didn't go to school for musical theater. It's something that I sort of happened into. And so I really enjoy it. But I also... Like I'm not someone that really listens to soundtracks unless I've seen a show because I think the one of the cruxes of musical theater that also makes it different from a lot of other mediums and a lot of, a lot of other art forms is that it's meant to be experienced like in space. And so I think these like filmed productions are really spectacular. Like I know that Bandstand is on Playbill right now, which is like so exciting for those people that they have that documentation of that time and like, the opportunity to use capturing a show on film um, to show what you've already tried to do with staging and lighting to more directly like influence the eye, I think is really interesting. Um, But yeah, I'm not generally drawn to watching something that I haven't seen in person. 
because mm -hmm. I, I, that for me is where the medium lives. And I enjoy seeing shows. My husband and I, like when we were in college, we had a friend that was like, you live in New York city. This is the only place that you can really be a part of this community. So you should go see stuff just because you'll never be able to do this again when you don't live here. We're like, that's actually really good advice. It's such a niche thing that happens in New York. And so we try to be really active and like see thing like new pieces of work. It doesn't have to be on Broadway, but just like going out and seeing theater and supporting it. Um, but I do love the, like I grew up watching the old movie musicals, like my claim to why I wanted to be a dancer was because I was rented singing in the rain on VHS from the library and just kept renewing it week after week mm -hmm. until the library gave us the copy of it because we were the only ones getting it. And it like gave me so much joy. And I like taught myself all the dances. Like, I've been watching movie, those movie musicals from that era since I was like three. Um, so I do love the nostalgia of that. And I think some, you know, like Rob Marshall did an extraordinary job with Chicago of capturing that. And that's where you see like the genius of a director choreographer on film because they understand how the movement can aid the narrative instead of it becoming like dance sequences for dance sequences sake. And it feels sort of disjointed and like mm -hmm. understanding how, song ties into all of that and capturing it. So I think things like that are really interesting, but also, yeah, it's my work. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I, and I think my husband and I too are just trying to like, what are things that we've been wanting to do that we haven't? Yeah. Cause like, when else have we had this time? Yeah. Yeah. Are you know, there I haven't been, like, yeah. Oh, no, you go, Nick. No, 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 no. Go good. Please ask. Yeah. Do you think? Just like, are there any things that since you've been, you know, quarantined at home that have always been in the back of your mind? Like, oh, I'd like to do that, but I don't really have the time. Like, what are those type of things you've been doing? Or have you just been chilling, which is also cool? Um, I don't think I've really done. We've been cooking more regularly and like more and more often together. So that's been like a nice thing to sort of re- incorporate into our life and really make that an intentional habit. So I'm hopeful that whenever this ends, that we've built that habit so that we don't have to think about it. And then we're just in the habit of, you know, like making our dinners and then prepping our food for the next day so that he can bring it to work and vice versa. Um, but otherwise I kind of, I think I have some pretty good habits that I've just tried to maintain. Like I practice guitar 30 minutes a day because I want to learn how to play the guitar and I continue What's actually quite impressive is that I've spent a lot of time practicing guitar over the last nine months. And it's actually astonishing how often you can do something and still be God awful at it. Um, mm. So that's been special. Uh, I try to read a book a week. So now I'm reading more often because I have more time to read, but I weirdly I'm still kind of busy because we're still in, we're still casting the production of six that will be a sit down in Chicago. So I'm like watching mm. self tapes and doing conference calls and then having zoom sessions. So like, and I'm teaching online. So weirdly, I don't have as much time as I would have expected. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in the same place. Cause it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's cool because there's so I think there's so much happening right now because people have found ways of like, you know, interviews like this or, or, you know, just things that are happening. I'm, I'm, um, I'm doing a, a zoom. We're going to put put out a press really soon, but one of my, one of my newer plays I'm doing a, I'm going to do a zoom reading of, um, and we're going to, we're going to project that. So that's like, you know, there's a lot happening, but like your time goes very quickly. Cause like, there's just a lot happening. And, um, it, 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 it tends to be like the kind of thing where I actually have to really, like I was, you know, with quarantine, I was like, Oh, I, I'm going to have all this free time, but like, I actually have to schedule my days. Like, cause there's a, there's like a, there's like a lot of shit that's going on in any one given day. Um, one, one thing that literally just occurred to me, like maybe 15 minutes before, um, was like, I want, I was going to actually, Eliza, I was going to call you about this. Cause I think this is, I think it could be something that could be fun. I want to do a radio drama. Like there's, there's literally no reason. Cause like half of us have like, like mics, like the yeah. voiceover shit. And I was almost like, part of me was like, like, I want to do a radio drama. I also was like, honestly, not for nothing, but like whiskey land could really work on a soundscape. Like yeah. actually really work. like, and it's that I just, I, I just had that idea of being like, hmm, I wonder if I can write something or I wonder if I can use something I already have 
and like do it over like as a radio or like a podcast thing um because that's the i will say that's the other thing that i'm doing so i just uh there's the broadway podcast network um which you have if you haven't heard of it it's, it's an awesome thing it's basically like earwolf for broadway podcasters and um they they just uh, uh picked up my my podcast i have a movie review podcast that i've been like fucking around with for you know god knows how long but like never released and then they were like you want to just put that on here i was like yes so that's that's I, we've actually been getting ready to release season one so that's that's been the big thing that i'm doing um right now um which is cool but like yeah i just i I've, i feel like i feel like right now we we're in this place where like you said about andy's choreography like are, are, are we have to we've been given these this structure this like these boundaries for our creativity but within those boundaries we can do boundless things like there's a lot of possibility right now you know yeah like i always mm -hmm. say scarcity breeds creativity and so yeah. why i am generally which is hysteric like i am generally drawn to minimalism in art um mm -hmm. which is funny because then i did Oh, it's back there. You can see it, actually. I did King Kong, which yeah. is like the height of you, spectacle. Yeah, you did King Kong. I sure did. Um, yeah. Which was like also really informative and interesting in another way. But that's not my natural aesthetic. I'm more interested to see like what, how can we create the same thing with less? And then with finding less. out when more is essential. Because I think yeah. there's a lot of opportunity, even just from simplicity of staging, of how yeah. you can create. And that's why... The human brain, like our imaginations are so powerful. That's why whenever you watch a film and like they're in a negotiation scene and then they say like, well, what's the amount? They write it down and then they hand it over and then they look and the, the amount was never discussed. It's mm -hmm. never said out loud. We never get to see it because the human brain does so much more thinking about it and it's more interesting and makes it more relatable to a larger number of people because every single person individualizes that for themselves. And mm -hmm. so all that to say long winded rabbit hole version of saying, I love the idea of like weekly podcast release of like a radio drama or taking yeah, something really like that, cool. like chapter by chapter, like super old school. Um, super. Cause like the thing I was thinking of was like Orson Welles, right. When, when he had, when he had his, um, uh, he was doing, Oh my God, I'm going to forget the name of that theater group that he started but it was like, it was like the big theater group in New York during the right after the depression. Um, but he obviously got, you know, in super amount of trouble for his war of the world's uh, radio broadcast. Right. right. And that was like, that was like a, a, a seminal thing that like put him on the map and not, you know, but, but I think that we've lost, you know, we have to, obviously we are in flux with podcasts right now, but just the idea of like a really well done narrative piece that, you know, that is auditory could be fun. Um, also Especially because like, audibles are so popular like people yeah. love listening to books like that's and people have endless amount of times that they're trying right now but they're trying to you know be out and about doing things so the idea that like every week a new episode could be released could and be really something fun. that's narrative driven instead of interview i feel like that provides a really exciting form of escapism that's also generating thoughtful conversation too i really like that I really like that. You're so um, smart. You should know. Posted that. Yeah, for sure. I will. I I did something like that in high school. And then I hear uh, Ashley, who's commenting, said that they did radio dramas in middle school and they wrote them, created commercials and everything. So I definitely awesome. think cool. there's, some, there's like a, a market or a need for a medium like that. I love that idea. Let's think, yeah. we'll, Eliza, let's, we'll think on this. We'll think on yeah, this. Let's chit chat on this. Let's let's the other chat. thing is that. I don't have as much time these days because it still requires so much to maintain Nick Walker's well-being. And that's a big part of my day, you know, just checking in, sending <sighs> Marco Polos, okay. sending Bitmoji videos or Animoji mm -hmm. videos, as I discovered I can now do with more giraffes. Yeah. Like, it's a lot to keep up with him and you I know, just want to make you, sure he's okay, you know? You know, the moment that I realized that I had to check in on Eliza was when I saw, I saw King Kong and uh, she, there's a scene where she's out of, she's out front of a curtain, you know, and, uh, and all her, like the idea is that, you know, behind this curtain, King Kong is like ravaging 
this 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 theater and like killing people like you literally see people being dragged under the curtain and like killed you assume they're they're dying um and eliza you know her character was out front of this curtain just dancing the entire time dancing at almost trying and to scream pretend crying. and scream crying you know some people might say it was like a really funny illusion like the show must go on other people might think like, ooh, that person's a sociopath and like has no empathy for the people that are like clearly being like limb from limb eaten behind the curtain. And that's what I felt. It was one of the most effective moments in the show, but it was also the moment where I said, hmm, I have to check in on that person because anybody that they could cast to play that so accurately, you know what I mean? What does that say about who they are and what's a going on? gifted actress. Here? Thank you so much for bringing you know who, that uh, up. You know, you know who else is a gifted actor? Keanu. <laughs> you know what I'm, i don't doubt that he's capable i, I will never he, discount so someone's capable. capability i he's just fully capable. disagree with the perspective of yeah. his character of john wick of john wick yeah. tell john wick that i love that <laughs> yeah so I definitely want to be conscious of the time. So just like one or two more thoughts and then I will let yeah. you go off. But so we kind of touched on this, but this is certainly something serious that I want to make sure we get to. So can you just mm. talk about flower a little bit? Mm, mm, mm. Tell us about flower, Nick. Oh God. I don't even know. Here's the thing. I don't know how it started. I don't know where it came from. Except for, I think, I think maybe I did like a, like a, like a flower esque. So flower is the skunk character from Bambi for those of you who don't know. And that is also Elijah, Eliza's, I almost called you Elijah right there. So you did that. almost, you did. I did call That's you okay. Elijah. It wouldn't be the first. Wouldn't be the first. It's, there we go. Uh, that was her, that is her name for me. She calls me flower uh, as though I resemble that little skunk. You know, uh, and I don't know. Did I did I, did I like do a flower esque behavior? Well, or you did have. You are a flower esque behavior because flower is you, and you are flower. <laughs> but I believe the origins of this is that you were tormenting me backstage yeah. per usual uh, um, per in huge. Hamilton and American Musical on the. It's Broadway. not called that anymore. It's not called that anymore. You can't say that. It's just Hamilton now. There's no one in American Musical. It's not called that. They they dropped that. Yeah, you've been away for too long. Whoa! Did you not know I that? Mean, that's <laughs> a thing. It's a, no, it's a real thing. It's not. It's not Hamilton American Musical anymore. Like mm -hmm. actually, it, and it like blew my mind. I was like, since oh, wait, what? when? Since like I think since like 2019. I think they dropped that. They dropped it because like I, I was calling. Out, I was like, yeah, Hamilton. Person could do. Apparently, they did because like. I was, I think it was like some publicity thing. And John was like, yeah, no, it's not called that anymore. It's just called Hamilton. I was like, okay. My mouth hasn't been that dropped open since last night's episode of Tiger King. I, my I mind you. is blown. I hate you. How dare you bring Tiger King into this house? First of all, episode six is titled Murder, Mayhem, and Madness, which means, yeah, yeah. so are we saying up until that point, those things haven't taken place? <laughs> I think we are, and I think they, that is, that's the point, you know, I mean, even though Carol did it. Carol for sure killed her husband. Carol did it. Carol did it. Terrible. But to get back, yeah. Hamilton. Wow. <laughs> Hamilton Flower. Exclamation point, period. And that is the show. That's the so show. So Hamilton now. on the Broadway. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nick and I were in that together and we were backstage yeah, we were. and he was um, tormenting me as per usual. Um, per usual. And he does this like little thing when he's like being annoying. He's like, and he always does this little thing. And it's like his shoulders come up. And I was like, you know what you are? I was like, you're a skunk. And he's like, what? And I was like, you're a skunk. And I was like, but you're a skunk that wants friends. And that doesn't know, like sometimes tries to act like they're not a skunk. I was like, you're flower from Bambi. <laughs> so then I sent, I went home. I sent him a meme of that, of like, he, it's the skunk and he's in a petal of like, it's so true. The field of flowers and he just waves. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, that's that is you. And, um, and that's like now the majority of our text conversations end or begin with that gif. Yeah. Of like flower the skunk. So that's flower. Gross. And that's Nick. 
flower. It's not it's me. Just a little flower. And yeah, exactly. There's no, oh. there's, they are I one. Yeah. I hate that. I really well, hate you, that. You hate it because it's true. And it's hard to sometimes address and face the realities of ourselves. Oh my God. You are such a demon. <laughs> get out! <laughs> like, what is your deal, dude? It makes me so happy. Oh, God. Earlier, okay. when you were saying we can't predict the future, we don't know when we're gonna come back. I had to really fight myself to not interrupt you and say, "But of course, Nick can because he sold his soul, and so he can't attack to the devil." The <laughs> I do know things. I did do things yeah. to get where I am. I have, in fact, sold my soul. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all right. Uh, we are. Okay. Here we are. One day we'll recover it. Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. I feel like it's that that fire burning. Everything is fine. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly. Exactly what it is. No, no, it's fine. Um. Yeah, man. And Nick, so I spoke with Fergie about this, but on your first <laughs> or your first show. When everyone yeah. just attacked you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That was amazing. Sharing Hamilton and Ain't Too Proud stage door just on the same street. That's just yeah, amazing. yeah. So I don't know the story. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna tell you the story. So I had did my first show at Ain't Too Proud, and uh, I had I had like I had like 20 people there. Like it was a it was like a big old crew that came through, and I was very it was very touched. A lot of Hamilton fam, like a lot of just you know family. Um, and then I went out to to sign after people, um, you know, and 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 I, and you guys were there, and it's very sweet of you to be there, and um, and then in the middle of all this all this joy. A, a very large man comes up behind me and lifts me up in the air with what can only be described as like, like, a, like, you know how, when you go to Disney world and you see the, 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 not the face characters, but the characters that are in the full body suits and you're like, and it's beautiful because like, they are so, they're like such wonderful characters but you're also like please don't touch me because i feel like you have some sort of unnatural strength and i feel like i feel like 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 you will kill me like this is this is where i die that's what it felt like it felt like that it felt like like that like somebody was hugging me that should not be giving hugs and of course when i turned around it was daniel gaiman who should not be giving hugs you know what i mean daniel gaiman is is a fool he's a buffoon He's a buffoon man. And Fergie was there too. And Fergie's whole thing is that Fergie loves to make me physically uncomfortable. So he will rub his body on mine. And like, and it's, and it's wholly inappropriate. It's like totally not okay. Um, but that's what he did. And that's what Daniel did. I feel like I, cause I saw James before the show. I don't think James was there, but I feel like James had some part in it because he usually does uh but that was it and it was just really um really didn't leave a good taste in my, in my mouth and it really uh just let me know that when this this ban is lifted and when we return to our theaters um they need to be careful at their stage door because my show gets out before theirs so I have more time. And, w- and on several occasions already, within the three weeks that I got to perform, I would finish my show and sign. And then I would go directly into their stage door and like sometimes be waiting for them in their dressing room when the show came down. Do you mean? And like, because I'm friends with your stage door guy. Like I know I can, I used to work there. I can get in. I still have the key card, you know? So like, it's just dumb. Fergie's just dumb. And I don't, I don't have access to the Lion King uh, where Daniel Gaiman works. So that I'll have to work on. But like, I do know a lot of people in that show and like, uh, this, uh, that, uh, that's easy, you know? So, um, I do want to say my show gets out before all of you. <laughs> so yeah, but, but you guys are like, wait, like, where, yeah. Where is your theater though? We're on 47th. 
All I have to do is oh, walk yeah. through the Edison. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. You're right on 47. That's You're gross. Right there. I don't like that. Move your theater. <laughs> go, go the I'll just call the Schuberts. Yeah. We call the Sh- about that. Call the Sh- call the Schuberts. Dude, like, call hey, them up. I got a building relocation for you. Hey, Nick I Walker like doesn't feel get, comfortable. And he I don't shouldn't. feel safe. Yeah. Dude, I'm going to email my producers tonight. Be like, Tom and Ira, guess what? I don't feel safe with six this close. Please talk to the Schuberts and have them move. Mm. Take over whatever. Some other, you know, go to like, go to Brooklyn. Do your show with Bam. Do you know what I mean? You know do, what it, I mean? Do, yeah. do it as a Bam show. Do your show. show in Brooklyn. That's I a nice happen. easy commute from Queens, right? That's right down the BQE. Are you kidding me? I'll do that. Is I'm it? Done. Sometimes I feel like... It, Queens, you have to go in to go out. Except for one of us has a car. Oh. You know what I mean? Congrats. Beep boop. Beep boop. That's a grown-up life. I mean, what's a flower life? You know, no, that's that's very um, that's surprising for flower. That's that's Sarah. <laughs> that's not that's not flower. That's Sarah. It actually is. It's wholeheartedly. That was that was her one request on our on our wedding registry. She's like, I was like, yo, get me tickets to like Hawaii. She was like, a car. <laughs> so well, she wants. She's like genius. No, she had a badass wedding registry. It was actually really. She asked for like some stuff that I didn't even think about, and that like today is saving our asses. Like, like a car. Like a like a humidifier, air purifier. Like she like she yeah. she she cleaned up. She cleaned up. And you thing. found so, a winner, dude. What? How? How I did it? I, I don't know. You know. That uh, will be one for the ages. <laughs> hey, one for the one for the flowers. Yeah. One for the flowers. One yeah. for the flowers. You're representing you know? all the flowers out there. It can happen. It can happen. You can guys. be a little skunk and find. And you know what? In the movie, flower does find someone. <laughs> it's just becoming more true i hate you what's hate so incredible you, about it is that sometimes i surprise myself with my ability to just have insight should, into such things with such clarity it's actually you shouldn't surprise anyone this is not a surprise to anyone whatever i have no i have nothing to say i'm done i'm done <laughs> Oh, this is yeah. amazing. And we will end on that note. I love to always end it, though, asking if there's any charities, nonprofits, or things that you want people to make sure to keep an eye out on for the next like few weeks or months. So definitely mm. the Actors Fund we've all been talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Eliza, why don't you start? And then Nick, finish it up. Yeah, so actually a nonprofit that my husband works for and that we're pretty involved with is called The Bowery Mission. It's one of the um, oldest homeless organizations in uh, New York City. Um, And that's a population that in these times um, really need care and are being really overlooked by a lot of the efforts that are being made by the city. And so if and when you can, Hope for New York and the Bowery Mission are two really phenomenal organizations helping a lot of like at-risk youth as well as the homeless population in New York. Mm -hmm. Um, organization that I, I always try to uh, put forth is Give, Give Kids the World. It's an organization in Orlando. Uh, a lot of kids who are, um, you know, kind of in a having you know severe illness or whatever they 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 wanted to be near a theme park. They they go to the sort you know go to this place and it's kind of right by the parks and they you know they really just give them a wonderful experience and obviously everything that's you know having to do with the parks is is really taking a hit these days. Um, so give kids the world. And I also just want to say, um, you know, take care of yourselves. Just take care of, you know, and not, not that you can't please give these organizations, but also really, you know, this is, this is crazy stuff and we we're all going through something. So, you know, just know that whatever you're feeling is okay. And, you know, and then you're not alone. So. Yes, you are yeah. not alone. I love that so much. Uh, thank you. Y'all can find me at B way show. Do you want to say yours quickly? Oh, yeah. I'm at Eliza Omen on Instagram and at Eliza underscore Omen on Twitter because, you know, we're fancy. Nice, nice. And uh, I'm at Nikki Walks on both Twitter and Instagram, N-I-K-K-Y-W-A-L-K-S. Awesome. I now have a Patreon under Showtreon, so find me there. And oh, my I'll- gosh, cute. 
I will continue the series of The Show Must Go On line. And we have James Snyder on Tuesday. So tune in then. Mm-hmm. Thank you both so much. And we'll see you at the show. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.